morning. Good morning. Oh, maybe at some point we could get a cup holder on this particular. I'll build it. We're cool. All right. My eyes may dart a little more this morning, so I'll I'll try to be concise and maybe a little slower. Um, but that's okay. It'd probably be more understandable that way. <clears throat> what I didn't start with before I preached, uh, got to preach last week was, was uh, how uh, Jesus changes us, what, what, what that meant and what that pertained to the lesson. It's having faith in his word and having faith in scripture, that is also a gift through faith that we have to be able to, uh, that Christ changes us all the time through his scripture. And so having said that, a continuation, if you will, of what I was trying to impart last week is where I'll continue with today. Um, we don't... Have you ever heard the term uh, blind faith? We don't have that. Now, we can... I understand in the secular world what they mean by that because that's kind of something that they need uh, in their own belief systems, but we don't have that. Now, is it difficult to see around the corner? Sure, I get that. But are we blind about what is behind the corner? No. So let's just start with that. And uh, let me continue. <clears throat> we believe the Bible to be inspired of God, correct? We have many reasons, though. We don't just, again, we're not blind. There's many reasons within scriptures that we can go back to that. Let me give you some idea about history. By the year... 367 AD, the entire Bible, as is now organized, was accepted as the authoritative word of God. No additions or changes have been made since then. And whether people agree or not on the contents, there is no disagreement, except for Muslims, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, who say the Bible was corrupted, and that they have a new revelation but that the 66 books contained in this volume make up the Bible and has done so for about 1,600 years. Why do we believe that this book is inspired of God? We believe and can show that it is an old book and a book re recorded uh, by certain people, but how do we know that this book given to us by God himself is that way? Well, there are about six different proofs. We'll go ahead and start with them. Proof number one, the Bible claims to be inspired. The Old Testament takes this idea of divine inspiration for granted since it continually describes dialogue between God and man. The New Testament, however, states the idea in different ways. Matthew 10, 19 through 20. But when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say. For it will be given to you in that hour what you are to say. For it is not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Jesus told his apostles that the content of what they would say would come from God. This counters the idea that the Bible is simply the product of human thought. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all these things and bring to you remembrance all that I said to you. This passage speaks to the how the apostles spoke from God. They were directed by the Holy Spirit. The apostles recorded the teachings and actions of Jesus over a three-year period without error or contradiction. This was done with the help of the Holy Spirit. Inspiration is a miraculous thing, and John records that the Holy Spirit is the one that made this miracle happen, like he did with other miracles. 2 Timothy 3.16. I'm sure you've heard this before. All scripture is, is inspired of God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Paul the Apostle says that all scripture is inspired. Some try to eliminate the creation account in Genesis or the accounts of miracles because of modern scientific skepticism. But the Bible says that it is fully inspired, not partially. Let me say that again. The Bible says it is fully inspired and not partially so.
2 Peter 1, 20-21 But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but when moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The Bible says of itself that its writing was never man's idea or written by his impulses or intelligence, or I might say lack thereof. God chose which men to write and selected what they would write. Don't question that. The Bible says it is not only a book about religion written by pious men, but the very communication between God and man. A person can choose not to believe that the Bible is inspired, but no one can deny that this is what the Bible says about itself. There are different inspiration theories. I'm going to give you three of them as quick as I can, but this will give you an idea of how other people and we look at inspiration in the Bible. When considering the idea of inspiration, the question is often asked, how did God inspire people to write the Bible? There are several theories about exactly how God moved men to write the scriptures. First one, generally, is called the dictation theory. This theory says that God dictated word for word everything that is in the Bible. Man was unconscious of God's knowledge and simply wrote down the words exactly as they were given to him by God. The problem with this idea is that there are different styles and qualities of writing among the various authors. For example, Isaiah is more poetic than Mark, and Luke's Greek is more polished than Peter's. If God dictated the Bible word for word, it would seem that each book would be equal in its composition, style, and language. The second one is thought theory. This theory proposes that God provided the general ideas and principles, and the writers interpreted these in their own words. This theory says that it is the thought or the general concept that it is important, and if some things seem contradictory or difficult, the mistakes belong to human writers. Of course, we admit, <coughs> of course if we admit errors in the details, years, locations, events, other things, how can we have confidence in the general concepts? God does not do things halfway. He does not make mistakes in general principles or in details. An inspired work is perfect from beginning to end, in general as well as in specific details. It is hard to trust a work that acknowledges mistakes. Another one is verbal inspiration. Sorry, my hands are hurting. This theory says that God revealed the true knowledge to the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and other Bible writers. And they wrote this information down under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The reason that each book has a different style and polish is the same reason that a particular song may have a different style uh, and polish depending on what instruments played on it, like a harp or a kazoo. The reason that pictures of the same object took different usually depends, or look different, usually depends on the materials you use to produce it. Oils, watercolors, crayons, <laughs> pencil, photograph, poem. I'm sure you understand. This is why Peter, the rough fisherman from Galilee, writes a simple, straightforward account of what happened to Jesus through his secretary, Mark. This is why Luke, or Paul, those are the educated men, weave intricate, detailed histories of their lives and teaching in a dozen letters. 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 13. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man of which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts and spiritual words. Can't say it much better than that. In this passage, 
Paul is talking about the inspiration process experienced by those who were used by God to record his word. The Holy Spirit guarded the apostles and others from error, but allowed them to write in their own language. Pretty impressive, don't you think? In their own style and with their own conscious personalities. However, the mind, the ideas, the concepts, the commands, the details, and the theology came from God. And when we say the Bible is inspired, here is what is meant. The purpose, ideas, knowledge, directions, commands, teachings, and visions all come from God. The decision as to who would write that, when and where it was written, came from God. The ability to remember, to describe accurately, to include all information necessary was given by God to men through the Holy Spirit in a miraculous way. The man who actually recorded the Bible wrote according to the language, education, and style that they possessed as human beings in, an, in their era and place where they lived. Continuing on. A strong indicator that the Bible is not an ordinary book that is indeed supernatural in character is the ability to survive violent attack and close scrutiny without being destroyed or discredited. How many people have you ever talked to that have kind of just played it off as just another book? I get it all the time, and that's mainly, they say it's a great book, but it's a book, not the book. First major attack that we can remember is the attack of the Roman Empire. From 249 to 305 AD, it was a capital offense to be in possession of any portion of scripture. This is why copies from this period were small and easy to hide. By the 4th century, Constantine, emperor of Rome, permitted and paid for copies to be made. I guess he saw a vision or something. The Bible survived the most powerful empire in history that was bent on destroying it, and yet, yet, survived and prospered. Second attack, attack by the Roman Catholic Church, Middle Ages. The Roman Catholic Church tried to keep people from reading or possessing the Bible because they felt it was too dangerous. They weren't smart enough to handle it. You might make their heads explode, I guess. In many cases, Bibles were chained to the pulpits so no one could steal them. They were also very expensive, of course, to reproduce at that time. By the 16th century, King James paid for a translation and distribution of the Bible in a common language and broke the monopoly of the Roman Catholic Church. The Bible survived the repression of the most powerful religious organization in the Middle Ages. This is another attack. Attack by the philosophers, skeptics, and critics. I think we still get this one today. In the 17th and 19th centuries, writers and thinkers in Europe began to question the Bible's inspiration and authority. They developed godless ideas about where man originated and how he should live. One of these, Voltaire, apparently a brilliant French philosopher, said it took 12 ignorant fishermen to establish Christianity and one Frenchman to destroy it. His personal crusade was to discredit the Bible as uninspired and draw people away from it as their guide for life. 25 years after his death, his home was purchased by the Geneva Bible Society and used as a warehouse to distribute Bibles. <laughs> Irony. If we, took, <clears throat> if we took at the history of the Bible, if, excuse me, if we look at the history of the Bible, we see that it has survived military, religious, and philosophical attacks for over 2,000 years and continues to be the most printed, most translated, most read book in the world in all history. Of course, you would expect this from a book that says of itself that it is from God. The uniqueness of the Bible. Whenever scholars examine religious books, they always discover flaws, mistakes, the inability of the teachings to apply to all people or adapt to changing times. One reason why many religions like Shinto or Zoroastrianism 
die out is that their teachings become irrelevant or unworkable in changing times. Muslims protect themselves against this because they say that the Quran was actually written by God in a special language and no non-Muslim can touch it or understand it properly. However, many scholars agree that the Muslim religion has many inconsistencies and without changes cannot survive or to be adapted to Western countries. I'm not banging here or slashing away. This is just what these people say. The Bible, however, has been translated, examined, and re-examined by scholars and experts in each century. These all come to similar conclusions about the uniqueness of the Bible. For example, the Bible is unique in its depths of insight and beauty. Dr. George White from Harvard University said that in comparison with other holy books in modern and ancient times, the Bible is in a class by itself. There is no comparable book or class of writings. It is deep enough for the most learned scholar and simple enough for a child to grasp. The Bible is unique in its unity. 66 books, 1,400 years to write, 40 authors writing at different times and places, most not knowing each other, yet the entire book tells only one story without contradiction, confusion, or disorder. It is as if only one person wrote it, and of course, only one person did, God. The Bible is unique in its universality. The Bible is the most read, most translated, most sold book in history of the world without exception. There are still over 5,000 partial and complete copies of original biblical manuscripts that exist today. No other ancient book has this many in circulation that are this old. It has had universal appeal for over 1,900 years. No book can claim as many readers in as many centuries in as many languages for as many years. No other book has been so studied and found to be so unique in the style, content, and unity. And you would expect this from a book written by God. Proof four, it works. This is a modern man's criteria. Something is true or good because it works. With this in mind, one cannot deny the fact that the principles contained in the Bible do work to produce happy and peaceful lives. No other philosophy, lifestyle, or religion works better. All you have to do is examine non-Christian countries to see this. For example, the United States prospered when it is has prospered when it is functioning under Christian principles found in the Bible and has begun to falter as a nation as it's moved away from these. You would expect that God's manual for life would lead to superior life for a person or nation that follows it. Simply compare any person or nation not following the Bible and it will be plain to see that God's plan for life is in the Bible and nowhere else. That whole love your enemy, love your neighbor as yourself completely makes sense. Proof number five, historical exactitude. If a book is inspired, it has to be accurate because God does not make mistakes. Archaeology supports the historical accuracy of the Bible. I'm sure you know that. Archaeology is the study of people, customs, and life in ancient times. They do this by digging up and studying the remains of ancient cities, villages, and temples. Whenever archaeologists discover a city or people mentioned in the Bible, everything they find out in their discovery is, is in harmony with what the Bible describes about these people. Actually, archaeologists use the Bible as a reference guide to search out many of these ancient places. For example, Joshua 3.10 mentions the Hittites. I mentioned it last week. But until recent history, archaeologists had found no trace of any such civilization. This was one of the arguments used to reject the historical accuracy of the Bible. In 1872, however, archaeologists discovered Hittite writings and the remains of their cities, which confirmed their existence and Bible accuracy concerning these people. 
Sometimes historians find out that their discoveries do not contradict the Bible. They simply do not have all the pieces of the puzzle. For example, Isaiah 21 mentions Sargon. His name was not in any historical records of the kings of that time, but recent discoveries have shown that he borrowed his name, and this fact was only recorded in the Bible, and not the records kept by historians of that era. The key idea of the historical evidence is that if the Bible has been shown to be accurate in obscure historical facts, it is not logical to trust its, its accuracy. Is it not logical to trust its accuracy in other matters as well? Men have tried to undermine this accuracy for centuries and have always failed. You would expect a kind of razor-sharp accuracy book uh, uh, that has been written by God. Lastly, fulfilled prophecy. Men cannot accurately predict future events. They can study trends and make predictions based on these hoping to have a percentage of success. But only God, however, can be 100% successful in predicting future events. In the Bible, there are many predictions or prophecies of events in the lives of people and nations that would take place days, years, and centuries in the future. For example, here is one of Isaiah's prophecies. It is I who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he will perform all my desire. And he declares of Jerusalem, she will be built. And of the temple, your foundation will be laid. That's Isaiah 44, 28. Isaiah, Isaiah lived in 700 BC. The Cyrus that he speaks of is king that will rule 150 years later. He names him, gives his position, and explains that he would eventually do um, which is to allow the, cap the captive Jews to return to their land and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem, this would be like me predicting the name and party of a president who would be a century in advance. There are hundreds of such prophecies in the Old Testament, and of these, 61 deal specifically with Jesus, his racial lineage, Jeremiah 23.5, time when he, would come, uh, when he would come, Daniel 2, 31-45, the place where he'd be born, Micah 5.2. Titles and power, Isaiah 9, 6-7. His character, ministry, and death, Isaiah 42-52. through 52. How is fulfilled prophecy evidence that the Bible is from God? Well, accurate fulfillment of a prophecy is a sign that a supernatural power is at work. Some have guessed at the future, but no man has produced hundreds of accurately detailed and fulfilled prophecies only God can do this, and he has done so in the Bible, and that is his word. I have a little more in the summary, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, we only need to know this. God is good, always has been. He reaches through us through his scripture, through the evidence of his scripture, through Christ his son, and through his church, which is quite evident even here today and in other places abroad. Just keep in mind that you don't have to question anything from God's word. What we do have to do, however, is to convey other people what God words, God's word says. And we need to make sure to bring them into the fold if we can. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>